what is this? What's going on? As I make a mad dash, pushing through the red fog, I finally reach the Yasogami High Entrance. But once I'm there, I can only stand there in a daze. Isn't this... where the P1 Grand Prix took place? Why is the TV world showing up in reality? From the stupid posters introducing the participants to the tacky decorations, every last detail is exactly the same as when my friends and I fought to save Labrys, who'd been thrown into the TV world. No, not exactly the same. There's one thing that's different. This time, there's a bizarre giant tower looming over the school, like it pierced through the place. I gotta tell the others! I quickly take out my phone, but the screen's still black. Oh yeah. Is someone there? <gasps> Chie? Is that you, Chie? Yukiko! Oh, thank goodness, my cell isn't working, so I didn't know what to do! <laughs> I see. I'm glad to hear that. You're probably the best on my list, after all. Huh? My instincts tell me to be on guard. I've always been close to Yukiko, and always will be, and I know she doesn't talk like this. Plus, Yukiko said she'd be busy with a huge group of guests tonight. You're not Yukiko! Who are you?! <laughs> you don't have to worry. I was never intending to deceive you. I mean, you didn't die for me, fair and square. What? Wait a sec! Who are you? Why are you after me? Why? You, you see, see, I'm your, your enemy. enemy. I was made to kill you and your friends. Maid? This sounds like a good time for me. General Teddy, to explain what's going on. General Teddy? Why are you here? I mean, you were Labrys's... Blah, blah, so nitpicky. With that level of nagging, I worry that you're already turning into an old maid, Chie chan What? Look, it doesn't matter. Anyway, that's not Yuki-chan. It's a total fake that I made. So there's no need to worry at all. You can polarize her to your heart's content! Little... There's no need to worry at all? You took the time to make it look like Yukiko, so don't give me that crap! Oh, really? Then hurry up and die! Persona! Right then, I dive sideways, like an action hero. The fire that Yukiko... Or her fake? Anyway, that fire dances just where I was standing a second ago. No way. Does this mean... She can use a persona? Huh? How? Hmm? You, you can, can use, use yours too, Chie. Didn't I tell you? I can? How? I mean, this is the real world! Oh, sorry. I totally forgot to tell you. This is the P1 Climax, so I want to do these matches fair and square, as equals. Which is why I've made your world the same as the one in the TV! The same? What do you think you're doing? And what's this P1 Climax thing? Ah, so many questions. That's just how things are. So hurry up and give us a nice heated battle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I forgot the bomb had inside it yet. Well, let's start this problem. The fake Yukiko raises her hand to the sky. Seems like that was the signal, because four red pillars come falling down from the sky and slam into the ground, surrounding her and me. Whoa! These are just like the ring posts in martial arts matches. Shall we begin? 
How could I understand the situation? But our town is a mess, and if it's left like this, there might not be any going back. My town, my school, all the things I want to protect. I make up my mind and take a firm stance. Take a deep breath and close my eyes. It doesn't matter if it's a TV world or reality. The quiet darkness there is the same. I take another breath and face myself once more. Time to fight. Another fight. That was a... Already starting off really great. It's my new strategy. Lake sweeps all day. I think this was a bad idea. <laughs> I forgot Yukiko, or fighting against Yukiko can be a huge pain in the ass. That's why she needed to get Galactic Haunted. That's a creepy uh, picture right there. As if signaling, signaling the end of the fierce battle, a crunching sound echoes through the area and the red pillars shatter. What looks like specks of light come out of the fake Yukiko as it melts away without a trace. All I can do is watch stunned as the lights flutter up into the sky, swirling higher towards the, that bizarre tower. Chie! Are you alright, Chie? Suddenly, Familiar voices come from behind me. When I turn around, I see two figures I know very well running towards me through the red fog. You in Yosuke? Oh no, you don't! I reflexively take a fighting stance again when I see them rushing towards me. I mean, you never can tell if they're real or not. Whoa, hold it, calm down! We're the real ones. I'm glad you're safe, Chie. Yukun. His voice carries that unwavering trust. Yep, this one's no fake. It's the real Yukun. Yeah, you sure seem like the real deal, Yukun. What about me? I mean, we've already dealt with our fakes. Huh? So you guys ran into them too? Yeah, we've defeated the fake Yosuke and myself. Is that a fake Yukiko? Seem that way. Actually, what's going on? Is this really the real world? Looks like it. Even though shadows are running around and we can use our personas. But that might as well be in the TV! What in the world's going on? Calm down, will ya? We don't know anything either. The Midnight Channel came on and General Teddy suddenly declared war on us. Afterwards, the town got swallowed up in that red fog. The Midnight Channel? Then is what happened with Labrys really not over? Yosuke and Yukun exchange a glance after my surprise reaction. Was it something I said? Don't tell me. Did you not see the Midnight Channel? Uh... <laughs> Seriously? I can't believe this. It came up so many times. Why didn't you check? No one said specifically to watch for it. All this happened suddenly while I was out walking Muku. So I don't know what's going on either. <sighs> Fine. Anyway, the town's in serious danger right now. That reminds me. General Teddy said something earlier about the world ending. Right. General Teddy says that if we don't win this tournament within the hour, the world will end. Apparently, he's holding Mitsuru-san and her friends captive in that tower. What? He is? I look up once again at the creepy tower looming behind me. That General Teddy talked a lot about doing things fair and square, 
but he's taken hostages and messed up our town. What choice do we have but to fight? Actually, I just noticed. Where's Yukiko? And is Kanji-kun okay? Teddy's headed over to Yukiko, and I doubt Kanji will go down that easily. We don't have any time right now. Let's leave those two to the others. We need to go rescue Mitsudu-san's group at once. What should I do? What do I need to do? I understand what Yukun is saying, and I get that the situation is bad, but I'm still worried about Yukiko, Yukiko and I can't make up my mind. Chie, believe in your friends. <sighs> He's right. If I go off selfishly looking for Yukiko, the world could be even in, in even more danger. Yukiko and Kanjikun are both good friends who fought alongside me this long. They're not so weak that some fake Teddy could take them down. I'll do what I have to. I make sure to look back into Yukun's kind eyes before nodding heartily. Let's go, Yukun! OTP. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, you're gonna believe in your friends and be the winners of the P1 Climax, is that right? Playing friends here? That's freaking lame. <laughs> my name's Sho Minazuki, and you guys are in my world now. A new challenger appears. Come on, no need to get all nervous. I came all this way to say hello. Suddenly, the eyes of the show guy gleam red. I have no idea what's happening. What is this? Even though we're standing a little ways away from him, all three of us are suddenly glued to where we stand by some immense pressure, like we're suddenly at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> It's not like we're being pressed, tor pressed towards the ground, it's it's just like an intense pressure pushing us in from all directions. I've never felt anything like it before, but it's making every bone in my body creak like they could snap at any moment. You look like you're in pain. <laughs> the look on your faces is just epic. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. Man, this power is useful. Oh right. Good evening. I'm Sho, Sho Minazuki, the culprit behind these shenanigans. You are? That's right. I'm the one that invited you here, and I'm showing myself right now. Now that I've shown you the way here, it's time for a showdown with Sho. <laughs> Get it? If you haven't got it already, Sho is very in love with puns. Bullshit! That ain't funny! <laughs> laugh! Wasn't it funny? Come on, laugh! I guess I'll dismantle one of them. I doubt that'll matter much. What? What's with this guy? He's definitely not normal. He was laughing like an idiot a moment ago, but all of a sudden, he's thrusting his, sh thrusting his sword at Yosuke's neck. This is bad. If I could at least get my legs to move, I could kick away that sword before he hits Yosuke. Is this guy really the culprit we're after? Oh, come on, why right now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, the show guy closes his eyes and acts like he's talking to someone. No way, a Persona Com? Could he have someone on his side with powers like Risei Chan's? After Show finishes talking to whoever it is, he turns towards he turns toward us and laughs like everything's normal. Sorry, we got more guests of honor. You guys are just the ginger on the side of the sushi, so all you get to do is look for your friends in the tower. But we have plenty of fun in store for the investigation team. You'll sure look forward to it. <laughs> oh, that's a good pun. What? Another joke? The way he acts definitely isn't normal, and the way he moves is almost inhuman. That show guy slips past us while we're still paralyzed, and then melts into the red fog as quickly as he came. It's only once he's completely disappeared that we're finally released from the pressure, gasping for breath. 
Damn it! What's with that guy? Is he really the culprit? We have to hurry and go after him! He's way too dangerous to leave him be! No. Teddy, Yukiko, and Kanji are still in town. If Teddy's nose is working, he may have met up already. So we're gonna leave that guy to just Teddy and Kanji? I mean, now Don Rise might find their way here, but... No, that show guy said they have more guests of honor now. At the very least, he's not after us for the time being. Oh. Wait, but what's that supposed to mean? Who are these guests of honor? When we watched the Midnight Channel, Labrys wasn't one of the captives it showed. The Shadow Operatives are Mitsuru-san's team. But no one said the ones we met are the only members. If their leader is in danger, it's only natural they'd send a rescue squad. Oh, right! Also, after the thing with Labrys, Mitsuru-san mentioned something about maybe having some idea who the culprit might have been. If that culprit is the show we met, it wouldn't be strange if he already knew Mitsuru-san and her team from before he met us. So, the guests of honor he mentioned could be the other shadow operatives, come to rescue Mitsuru-san's group. That's right. The show is underestimating us. If Yukiko and the others meet up with the shadow operative backup, they won't lose easily, not even the show. Wow, you really are smart. All right, if that's the case, we should get up this tower quick and rescue Mitsuru-san's group while he's not around. Yeah. Yukun and Yosuke run on ahead just like usual. Yeah, this is a familiar scene. Even that scary looking tower doesn't seem so bad. Now that my friends are with me, there's nothing to worry about. Yukiko, Teddy, Kanji-kun, Risei-chan, and even Naoto-kun. No matter what separates us, I'm sure we're all connected. That's what lets me go on. Maybe it's silly to think that way at a time like this, but it cheers me up a little. I follow behind the other two as fast as I can. And that's it for... GA's chapter. Maybe not, just kidding. JK, JK, LOL. <laughs> it's good that we got into the school, but just as I thought, it's nothing like the Yasogami High I remember. It's even more distorted than the TV world version of the school we saw when we saved Labrys. And with the red fog creeping in, it's three times as eerie as last time. I walk in nervously, like I'm hiding behind Yukun and Yosuke. Herg. This is humiliating. It's the same here as in town. The layout of the classrooms is all out of whack. I wonder how long this hallway goes on for. We keep passing by the same rooms. That reminds me. I remember a story like that. Something about the seven mysteries of the school and a hallway that loops endlessly. Hey! Yosuke starts talking about stuff he doesn't need to. He knows I hate that stuff. Telling a ghost story here is like adding more sauce to an already overflowing beef bowl. I know he's kidding around and cheer me up, but honestly, it's not doing much for my mood. That aside, the tower on top of the school seems pretty huge. We need to get up there, but I can tell it'll be tough going if we have to wander back and forth through hallways like this. Not only that, those fakes will probably attack us again, too. So, do you think that show guy really is the culprit? Who knows? It's pretty suspicious that he's taking credit for all this if you ask me. But then again, he didn't seem like an ordinary guy. When his eyes gleamed red, I lost control over my muscles. Like he commanded them, don't move! If that was a type of hypnosis, it's pretty powerful. If Sho is the culprit, he could have controlled those hijackers the same way. You couldn't mention that back at the food court. According to him, there was a hijacking to cover up Labrys' kidnapping, and the hijackers had no memory at all about what happened. It's true that when those red eyes stared at us, I felt a peculiar sense of intimidation that chilled me to the bone. It was such incredible power that I couldn't believe it came from a person like us. As we remember things and talk them over, we start to sort out details about that show guy. He had red hair, a big scar on his face, two swords, hmm? Wait, there was something else I noticed. Hey, wasn't he wearing our school's uniform? Huh? Oh, now that you mention it, it did kind of look like it. I'm sure of it. I've never seen a school uniform like that besides ours. Then does that mean Sho goes to Yasugami? What, you're serious? Uh, 
Is it possible for us to not know about a guy who sticks out that much? Hmm. I did think from last time that the culprit would be someone with ties to Mitsuru-san. I still can't shake that theory. Hmm. Oh, maybe he transferred here. Or it could be his older brother's uniform. Dude, don't go drawing up the culprit's whole family tree just on a hunch. I bet he's just a ghost or something like that. Maybe he has a grudge against our school? The moment I tried to raise a protest about Yosuke swerving the conversation back to a ghost story, I sense a presence of some kind up ahead, covered up in the red fog. Yukun grips the sword at his side. What is it? Be on guard. Don't leave my side. You're kidding me! <laughs> hey guys! Long time no see! Are you serious? <laughs> Adachi-san. And that's where you hit the to be continued mark. Cause that's a, that's a damn good cliffhanger. And a nice uh, title for that chapter part. Unexpected Reunion. So how many was it? That was like four? One, two, three, four. Alright, well, next up, we'll go to Yuki 